The U.S. government does not endorse products or manufacturers. Trademarks or manufacturers' names appear in this document only because they are considered essential to the objective of this document. This material is based on work supported by the Federal Highway Administration under Agreement Number 693JJ31750001. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this video are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the view of the Federal Highway Administration. The number one cause of roadway work zone fatalities and injuries in the United States are runover and backover incidents, many involving heavy equipment such as large dump trucks, paving machines, and excavators. Over 400 workers a year are killed or injured because they entered a blind spot where the operator of the machine could not see them and they were accidentally struck. Blind spots are areas around a vehicle or piece of equipment where the driver or operator cannot see because of the shape and size of the machine. Each type of vehicle has very different blind spots. Operators, and especially workers, are often surprised to see just how large blind spots are. For example, on a standard dump truck, there are over 100 square feet of non-visible areas surrounding just the passenger side. There are many other places around the truck where the driver cannot see, such as near the front, on the passenger side, and directly behind the vehicle. Of course, the best solution to avoid accidents is to never approach trucks and equipment. Most of the time, this can be accomplished through disciplined adherence to internal traffic control plans and other preventative measures. But there are times when a worker needs to speak with an operator, work in tandem with the vehicle, or work in a tight space. This presentation demonstrates how to teach workers to identify blind spots in order to safely navigate work zones on foot. We'll also demonstrate how to teach workers and equipment operators how to communicate effectively so that when it becomes necessary to approach a vehicle, it can be done deliberately and safely. Use our lesson plan to train your workers with hands-on, interactive, and visual examples that you can set up yourself. At the end of this video, you'll be able to plan a training session on blind spots for your workers and equipment operators, describe and locate blind spots on various vehicles, and be able to show them to your trainees. Explain to workers why it's so important to stay in their designated areas. Show workers how to communicate with the operator of a vehicle, and demonstrate how to navigate around these heavy machines when on foot. This training is designed to take place in two parts. Now, the first part is a classroom or toolbox talk style discussion where information is presented through visual aids and other materials. And the second part is a hands-on demonstration with actual equipment. We'll show you what you need to achieve in both parts. The first part of training is a face-to-face -face session with the workers, where you'll sit down together and discuss the hazards of blind spots and how to safely avoid them. There is no substitute for hands-on, face-to-face training sessions. Your workers will retain the material better, and they will understand how important it is to you and your organization that they stay safe on the job site. Begin by telling your workers the risks they face every day. While they know that large trucks and equipment can be dangerous, it's useful to reinforce this with hard facts and statistics. If you have a personal story or incident report from your company to share, this will have a direct personal impact. Now, on average, 50 to 60 workers are killed and struck by incidents on roadway construction sites each year, and this just reflects fatalities. There were over 17,000 struck by injuries in construction in 2015, 800 of which were caused by a construction vehicle. Next, show your workers where the blind spots are on dump trucks and other vehicles using diagrams and computer models. Point out the fact that blind spots aren't merely linear in front and in back of the vehicles, but in three dimensions. Blind spots extend below and around a vehicle in unusual and non-intuitive ways. We're showing you some computer models now of how this works. 
In addition, there are excellent physical diagrams and posters that contain this information available through WorkZoneSafety.org. When reviewing these diagrams and models, ask each worker where they think they're safe when interacting with the equipment. If the workers want to discuss times where they felt they weren't safe, engage them in the conversation and try to apply their experiences to the image you're showing them. The second part of training takes place in the field. The field training is an exciting yet sobering way to show the dangers of large equipment blind spots. This cab gave a big impact on your workers' perspectives on the dangers they face. You'll need a large area with level ground. This can be an equipment yard, bay, or other large parking lot or level field. There should be at least 150 feet of open space to ensure maximum visibility. 12 or more cones, 12 or more barrels or drums, three sticks that are approximately five feet long, 60 inches, three hard hats, flags, or paper bags, truck operator, spotter, and a large dump truck. Step one, have the operator park a large dump truck in the middle of the space, turn off the engine, secure and chalk the wheels. Step two, have the driver do a standard safety inspection Check the mirrors, backup alarm, windshield, lights, and so on. Step three, seat the driver in the cab in a neutral position with their head back. You may want to deflate the driver's seat so that there is a standard seat height that can't be adjusted. Roll the windows down and have a spotter communicate with the driver and the person staging the temporary traffic control devices around the truck. Step four, Outline the blind spot zones around the truck using the 12 cones and 12 barrels. Follow the guidelines in the provided diagrams for placement. Slide each delineator into place and, using the spotter, verify with the driver that they cannot be seen. Step 5. Stand the three 5-foot sticks or poles up in cones near the front and rear passenger blind corners of the trucks. Place hard hats, flags, or bags on the ends of the sticks to simulate workers in these blind areas. When the training begins, you'll line all of your workers up in front of the equipment. Tell them what they're about to do and show them the blind spots in real time. The workers will then take turns entering the cab after you demonstrate. Rotate them in and out of the driver's seat of the equipment. Have some workers walk around the truck to demonstrate for the worker who is sitting in the cab. It's important that you emphasize that operators and drivers must walk around their vehicle to check for hazards and blind spots before starting up or after sitting stationary for a while. Later, when possible, set up the exact scenario for a loader, excavator, crane, or other large piece of equipment. They do teach us a lot about blind spots, but I've never had actual visualization like we've done here. Um, it actually teaches a lot, shows us where, how far out blind spots actually are compared to when we're sitting in the truck and where we think they are. I have learned today that I cannot see a lot of spots. Um, they have to be further out away from the truck for me to see rather than somebody that's tall. To always keep me in mind that I cannot see them if they get in close to the truck. At all times, please warn me if you're gonna get into my blind spots. I don't think that they realize that I can see close up to the truck. They have to be standing back some in order for me to see them. They're bending over and kneeling around the truck, you cannot see them. This video has covered planning a training session on blind spots for your workers and equipment operators, describing and locating blind spots on various vehicles to be able to show them to your trainees, explaining to workers why it's so important to stay in their designated areas showing how to communicate with the driver or operator of a vehicle, and demonstrating how to navigate around these heavy machines when on foot. By following the guidelines of this training video, you're providing your workers and operators with valuable tools to protect themselves and others on the job site. 
Even though it's always better to separate workers on foot from equipment operations, there are times when it is necessary to approach in order to communicate. When those events occur, this training will significantly aid in protecting workers and getting them home safely at the end of their shift. Together, we can stop accidents in work zones. This material is based on work supported by the Federal Highway Administration under Agreement Number 693JJ31750001. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this video are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the view of the Federal Highway Administration.